Hi, everyone. I am here with Sam and Nicole, and us three OCD sufferers are going to be reacting to some different TikToks about OCD and kind of giving our takes. Um, before we do that, let's introduce ourselves. Um, my name is Tia Wilson. I work here at No OCD. I've had OCD my whole life and now get to do a lot of educating the community about what that actually looks like after going through treatment. Um, maybe Sam, do you want to go? And then Nicole, we can hear from you. Hi, my name is Sam Temple. I have been diagnosed with OCD since 2020, and I am an OCD advocate, and I love talking about OCD as bad as it is. I really love talking about it and helping other people. I'm Nicole. I also have OCD. Um, I'm a content creator and YouTuber, and I do make content about having OCD because, like Sam, as awful as it is, it is fun to talk about it and find community within the people who have OCD. And I've been diagnosed and getting treatment since 2021. Nice. Okay, I know you already kind of touched on this, Nicole, but... I think it's interesting. All three of us have obviously done a lot of content creation around OCD and have been vulnerable with our own stories. Um, I want to like, before we get into reacting to, to other content, just talk about what that looked like for us. Like what were maybe some of our initial fears when we first started sharing? Um, and yeah, how has like our relationship to OCD changed since talking about it? Oh yeah, when I first got diagnosed with OCD, I was very adamant about never ever sharing that with the internet, let alone with Same. more than just like a few close people because my first thought was that people were gonna use it against me. Like if I had shared it online or with my audience and I was very open and honest with my audience because I was literally making like lifestyle vlog-esque kind of videos. Um, and I did feel like I was keeping a big secret, but I was so worried about people finding out about certain obsessions of mine using them against me or somehow you know making these things come to fruition which was definitely the ocd talking and trying to control what i was doing it wasn't until a few years ago where i realized that there's not a lot of content about ocd to begin with and that the more that i talk about it the more people feel comfortable within themselves and how much i wish that i had someone talking about OCD when I was younger because maybe I would have known what it was because the only way that I knew what OCD was was like through misrepresentations in the media um, and stereotypes. And had I had someone when I was younger talk about this, maybe I would have gotten a diagnosis sooner. Maybe I would have gotten help sooner. I think it could have helped me a lot and find like solace within that. Um, so that's why it's so important for me to now make content about it and making it normalized in a sense, but also uh, destigmatizing OCD. Yeah, no, I remember having that same thought of like, no one's ever going to hear about this. Like my extended family is super, everyone's in everyone's business. Everyone knows everyone's business. So I knew they all would find out I was in therapy but I emailed them and I was like, you are not allowed to talk about it to me. You're not asking questions. I'm not answering questions. It's like a non-starter. I just did not. I had so much shame. Like it was so hard to, to talk about. Um, and then had that same experience of like, there's not a lot of content about this. There's not a lot of just education in general. It's really hard to, to find. And since being diagnosed, I realized there's actually a lot more than I realized initially. Like, I mean, you guys, like there's so many people out there actually doing this. But I remember when I first started sharing, I thought I was the only one. Like, I was just like, yeah. you know, it just felt like such a, a new and scary thing. But I also had that experience of, of realizing I could have been diagnosed so much sooner if these stereotypes had not been a thing. Um, and I'm sure we'll see stereotypes and what we react to today. But it, yeah, it, it matters. It matters the representation that's out there. It helps people in our former shoes, obviously, to get diagnosed a lot sooner than we were. For me, I didn't know that what I was experiencing were symptoms of OCD at all, because all I really knew was like, oh, OCD is washing your hands a lot. It's being really organized, being really tidy. There's just only kind of certain types of OCD that are normalized. And so I, for a long time, felt like, what if what if that's not what I have? What if what if it's something else? What if it's not this? And I'm like, oh, actually, like, there's a lot of things that contribute to OCD. It's not just this one thing. So I didn't think I was like, people, people are going to say I'm faking it or I'm lying or something when I just say, no, you guys don't understand. I think about the fact that there's a my tongue is in my mouth and it 
makes me spiral throughout the day. <laughs> and people would be like, that's not OCD. You're just, you're just weird. You just have anxiety. It's just this. And it's like, no, I, you don't understand. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think this is like a good tone going into these videos because we're gonna pick them apart a little bit. We might like joke about them, but I think it's really, it's something we can all relate to is not having the full context of what OCD is and maybe even misusing the term. Like I know my first, one of my first like YouTube videos that, that went viral was me misusing the term OCD. And I didn't realize at the time I had it and my panic attacks behind filming <laughs> were related to it, right? But like, I'm sure we've all misused OCD at times. And so none of our critiques are any sort of like hate toward the creators of these videos. It's hate toward the mass misinformation, like the the general lack of context people have on OCD and the way it can make things into little jokes or, you know, make, make, make people misunderstand. So I want to add that disclaimer before we start reacting um, that we don't know the people who have posted these videos. We don't know whether they have OCD or not. We're just going to be taking them at surface level and talking about how our experience relates to that. Okay. Should we do the first video? Yeah. Because I love and I love and I love and I love you only. Because I need and I need and I need and I need you more. Yeah. You know I run and I run and I run and I run. Okay. Interesting. Do either of you guys have thoughts? My first initial thought is like, okay, cleaning up after yourself is like the stereotypical thought of what OCD is yeah. or having to have everything in place. But then also another part of me is thinking about how sometimes that is what people's OCD can look like. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember watching a video about this guy on TikTok talking about how difficult his experience was with his mom having OCD. It didn't exactly look like this. It was more of kind of like a hoarding situation. Um, so kind of like the opposite, but how much that impacted him. So whether this person has OCD or not, you know, like I do feel like it is impacting the family somehow um, or them. But then again, it hard to say, hard to say if that, it, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah well, one I of the hard, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, Sarah. no, you're fine. <laughs> I think um, something else that's here, how do I phrase this? I want to talk about like, um, because this this was one of the ones where I was like you know but I don't know how to say it like a nice way yeah well I think it brings up a broader thing which is this you can't obviously diagnose OCD off of yeah one person, right which is a problem we see when people try to so again yeah. we don't know this person's diagnoses I think the part that makes it so we can't diagnose it is we don't see whether she's in distress or not that's, she might just that's like what it. I was trying to say. I feel like there's no level of distress, and that's why I'm kind of like, yeah. okay, all right. Um, let me think. How do I want to phrase that? I don't know. I don't know if I actually want to want to try to phrase it any type of way. I mean, that's totally fair. Yeah. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just don't want to. Yeah, it's it's and again we aren't trying to to diagnose or not. I think I had a lot of compulsions that on the outside looked like I was just doing my life, like no one would have known I was like suffering in so much distress, right? right? And so very well, that could be the case for her. And we often like see people use, you know, like a generalization that if you just are cleaning up after yourself and being generally responsible, right. there must be disorder to it. There's nothing in that video that inherently is disordered, like putting away someone's like video game is not a disorder, right? right? Unless behind the scenes, she's in a lot of distress and it's right. like significantly impacting her day. There's other things she wanted to be doing, right? That's when, of course, it could be. So I, I like what you said there, Nicole, like it could really impact her family. Like, and it might be small things like this, but I don't know, my family certainly was impacted by my OCD in lots of ways. Even me like standing up, pacing the, the floor at night, like would wake them up, right? And so mm -hmm. I think it's helpful that people share not just like the the lived experience of having OCD, but also the experience of having a loved one who has it. Because I don't know if you guys had 
your yeah. family's impacted by your OCD? If you were hiding it really well, like what that looked like? My mother and grandmother have OCD also. Wow. And so I, my mom's OCD was very pivotal, like for me in my childhood and just how I was raised. Um, and I didn't really know that or see it until I was diagnosed. And then in retrospect, I was like, oh, okay, this is why I'm like this in this way and in this way. So, yeah. I I agree. I Although I nobody else in my family is diagnosed, um, I do definitely see patterns or signs of myself and others, but it is often hard to, like, convince older generations sometimes to try and seek out help or, you know, people are kind of stuck in their belief that they are the way that they are and, you know, whatnot. And it's I think it's a lot different with our generation now. Um, and I have definitely impacted my family. Like I really tried my best not to, but my OCD, especially like during the pandemic, living at home, I was probably like a menace to live with because I was taking the pandemic a lot more seriously than most people were, but not to a healthy level. Like it was definitely to an extreme, which now I look back on, which was 100% due to me having OCD. Um, and being on, for lack of a better word, like to, I was on everyone's ass about everything. Um, but like dinner time was even difficult. Like I could not be around people chewing. And like, I think about how much I like impacted my family or made them feel bad because of that. Um, and I'm at the time I was like, well, this is just the way that I am. Like, this is, this is just it until I started seeking out, you know, ERP and, and medication for their treatment where I was like, this is something I actually want to change about myself because I am impacting those around me. Like I need to make a change. Um, so if this woman does have OCD, like if she is diagnosed, I hope that she can seek out treatment in order to like try and help her if this is causing her distress and like trying to better herself for not only herself, but her family as well, because these kinds of little things, while it may not seem like it's impacting others, or that it may be hurtful, it, it can be in the long run because we don't know what it's like behind the scenes, um, the things that they don't record. Um, that is, you know, if she if she does really have diagnosed OCD. Yeah. Something something that that video did make me think about that I experience a lot, and I wonder if you guys experience this too. But in in like my living space, I have like a color scheme, and if there's something that is outside of that color scheme visible, like that hot pink picture was actually driving me a little bit crazy in that kitchen. I, my brain will automatically sort it as clutter and it's like, I can't see it. I have to get rid of it. I can't see wow. that in my kitchen because it does not match. And my brain is like, that is, that cannot be in here. I have to remove that. So I wonder if maybe if, you know, I wonder if she experiences that type of thing where it's like this item in my brain is being sorted as out of place because it does not fit with the color scheme or like the the feeling of this space for me. Yeah, I don't know. No, I don't yeah, know if I other think... people experience that the way that I do, but it, it really gets on. It like really triggers me. Well, even if it's not like with color schemes in particular, I know you know us with OCD, we have oftentimes a cognitive distortion called selective mm -hmm. abstraction. Where yeah. it's like that one thing that you just yeah. cannot let go of that's yes. just a little bit off. You know, it's like the the ketchup on a white shirt. Like that one little thing that maybe others mm -hmm. aren't noticing, but you are. Um, and so it sounds like for you, it's like colors and, and like color scheme for me. Like I had just like disgust triggers that I wouldn't be able to get past. Like so... You know, some people, it might be like, if there's like a hair on the ground or something, they just can't look at anything besides that one gross hair, right? Mm -hmm. Or that one little thing that just really just is offsetting the vibe somehow. Yeah. And usually people without OCD might be like, oh, that's like gross or I don't like that. And they can see the rest of the room at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. and realize the bigger picture. But with OCD, it's like you are only seeing the pink picture. Or you are only seeing right. the little gross thing that you don't want there or like only noticing the one bag of you know, bag of chips you didn't sanitize during COVID, right? Like the yeah. one thing and our brain just like discounts the rest of the noise. And to other people that can look like being really nitpicky or, you know, just not fun to be around, mm -hmm. right? Let's maybe let's do one other video. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, I don't know if you guys can see the text that said, like, when it's laundry day and my socks don't match. My OCD latches onto it. Thoughts on this one? I can't say I particularly, like, struggle with that. But also at the same time, there are other things that I may struggle with that to another person, like a friend of mine who does not have OCD, they're like, Nicole, that's ridiculous. Like, that is so stupid. So I am empathetic if this person does really have OCD and this is something that's very difficult. I mean, good for them for doing like an exposure and like choosing to wear the socks and like probably showing themselves like, hey, look, nothing bad happened to me while wearing the socks. Or maybe they did. I don't know. Whatever that happens, I mean, good for them that they're doing it. Um, that's awesome. But I can't say that this is something that I particularly struggle with. But I mean, there are certain situations where what I'm, what does not feel right, it, it, it can bring me such amount of distress. Like, I personally do a lot of research. I try not to now that I'm in ERP, but like I can stand in a store for hours doing research about a certain yeah. product before I buy it. It could be as stupid yes. as like buying like a can of soup. Like I yeah. need to make sure yes. that I get the best one, the one with five star reviews, the one that did not make anyone violently ill. Like, and to someone else that could seem so minuscule and dumb. So I I'm try. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my, that, I that's... am so. It takes me hours to grocery shop because I have this like um, decision fatigue, or I forget like what the word is for it. Where it's like I get really overwhelmed by so many options, and I'm like, if I pick the wrong thing, something is going to happen if I don't research like the right type of whatever. To it's, I'm yeah. so like that. In this video, I am like that. I do this. Um, not necessarily with matching things, but I have like a little bit of superstition. Like I'm, I have like a fear of flying that I've talked about before, but I fly in the same pair of underwear. I have mm. done this since I was like in sixth grade. The underwear still fit me. I like it has to be this one specific pair of underwear. And I just feel like if I do not have these underwear on when I'm flying it, something bad is going to happen. And it used to be a whole outfit like shirt, pants, shoes. I had to fly in this one outfit, but I've been getting better about wearing different things. I've been having to travel a little bit more. So I'm like, all right, this time I'm going to change my pants. I'm still going to wear my underwear, <laughs> but it's like, I don't know. Like I get it with the matching. I know that some people do experience things like that. And it's, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. No, we all, we often have the overestimation of threat. And so it can be for the smallest things. Um, I'm the same with shopping. Um, I had like, uh, I always use this as an example, I feel like, but I, it was a while ago, was at the store and spent like, got out my phone and was ready to spend the next half hour Googling exactly which kombucha I should buy. Like exactly which one had, the, the, like you said, the five-star reviews, the exact perfect thing for me and realized that I would way rather have a half hour back and bad kombucha <laughs> than spend there yeah. trying to find the perfect one. So I just grabbed whatever one looked okay, went home and it was disgusting. It was so gross. It was like the worst, I worst choice I could have made and I was fine. Right. Like yeah. OCD loves to overestimate the threat and then also underestimate your ability to respond to it. So it's like, you know, Sam, if you you know didn't wear the, the lucky travel underwear, like you'd probably be able to cope with what came your way. But OCD's yeah. like, I don't know if you could like, I don't know if you can handle it. And I think this sock example, again, we can't diagnose off a video. There's right. no way to know this could. I mean, most people, I feel like, don't like wearing two different size socks. Otherwise, we would do that more regularly. Like. Most people wouldn't like that, but maybe OCD grabs on and tells them so they don't wear the certain one, something bad will happen, or maybe what if I can't handle the sensory experience and what if that makes me have a panic attack? Like, there's so many ways OCD can latch onto that, but I feel like the commonality with OCD is like overestimating the threat and then underestimating our capacity to respond. Like, I can have bad kombucha <laughs> and live to tell the tale, even though my OCD in the moment is like, this will ruin you, right? Yeah, like, right, this is yeah. going to be the end of it. Like, I hope that person with the mismatched socks, like, I hope that they are proud of themselves for, like, doing it. Yeah. Where they, like, you know, mm -hmm. had to. I mean, granted, they did say that they ran out of choices, but, like, 
I, I mean, I work on that with myself all the time, like when I am in therapy, whatever, like my challenges of that week to do something like more uncomfortable. Um, and it's not easy. It's not easy at all, even though it may look like so easy to like an outside person. Um, but unless you have it, you don't get how distressing it may be. And like, like the best way to describe it, like I should not feel like my throat is going to close because I am eating something that I don't want to eat. And it's really difficult for me to eat that, even though I know that it's a good exposure for me. And to another person, they're like, why the hell do you feel like your throat is closing because of that? It's like, you don't get it. You don't get it. It feels so mm -hmm. anxiety inducing, truly. So yeah. um, I, I hope that that person ended up having a good day so that they could have like a positive thought with even with mismatching their socks and also yeah. like I I do commend that person for sharing that just because to someone not struggling with OCD I feel like they would be like who cares like it's not a big deal and I'm sure I mean I don't know I in all cases of sharing anything to do with OCD it's very vulnerable and it takes so much uh bravery that's really important though I feel like sometimes we we forget that like with my OCD, there was obviously so many really taboo and highly distressing and uncomfortable things that it made my life difficult over. And it was a lot of those like daily little teeny things like putting on socks, like just the littlest aspects of my day to day were overtaken by OCD. So I think it's helpful to to show both sides, like both like the times where I was not able to leave my house and completely spiraling and that really like difficult experience but also the times when it was as simple as putting on my socks that I was just was not okay with I was really struggling there and I think I didn't realize how much OCD how much time OCD was taking from my day-to-day -day until I went through treatment like until I went through ERP and I suddenly had so much more free time because it I could just do things like put on socks or I could just grab something out of the fridge or at the grocery store, I could shop and not have it take like a full weekend, like three day weekend to get my shopping done. I feel like those little teeny aspects of our day to day are some of the most debilitating parts of OCD. And so I love when people bring awareness to that side too. I'm glad you mentioned that too, just because I feel like a lot of people don't understand how automatic it is. It's my brain just works this way. This is not like something I'm not going to choose to sit here and think about the socks. It's just, it, it's already cycling. It's already going. And then I don't realize I've been doing this for 30, 45 minutes until I'm like, oh my gosh, I've been, okay. Oh, okay. Oh no, now I'm late. It's like, now I have to worry about something else, but it's such a automatic process. It just sucks you in. Yeah. I've, I've lost years off my life. <laughs> like just worrying yes, about yes something else and that nowadays I don't even think about most of the time um I really mm -hmm. wish I I could get that time back and I, I do try to remember that like when I am in the middle of like an episode and be like this is valuable time that you're wasting but in that moment your brain is just so locked in that you're not you're not even realizing that you're doing it in the moment yeah, yeah. I think about it all the time how I wish I would have started ERP like 10 15 20 years ago. <laughs> mm -hmm. That would have been great. No, totally. Yeah. And I think people can understand obsessions. Like mm -hmm. even if it's just them obsessing over a crush or something, people can yeah. understand what it feels like to have that one thing you just can't stop thinking about, like just continues to pop in. Like you said, it feels automatic. Like mm -hmm. we are able to draw some space and, and make it less automatic. But a lot of the time, I mean, it's not like we're choosing our obsessions at all. They just are there. And I think people can understand that on some level, even if it hasn't reached the, the level of obsessive compulsive disorder, right? Mm -hmm. At least understanding what it feels like to, to have obsessions or to have that, that pull toward thoughts and then understand the compulsive aspect of feeling like you want to avoid and feeling that protective behavior come up for you. Everyone can understand that even if they can't understand OCD, right? Having the right. disorder aspect, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's also why sometimes people miss or self-diagnose or misdiagnose themselves off TikToks like this because they might right. recognize, oh, I have that same thing with socks, but just having one thing with socks does not mean you have OCD, right? I think that's also really important to bring up as we react to this. Like, it's so important that people recognize this is a disorder that impacts people's lives beyond a 30-second video they might post on social media.
Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. That I mean it kind of like led to the reason why I think I wasn't diagnosed because so many people were, you know, this was before TikTok really existed, but like growing up and seeing these representations of OCD and, you know, people in response being like, you know, that's not always OCD. OCD is not always just like washing your hands. I'm like, well, I I honestly don't wash my hands obsessively. There are periods of time where like if I'm extremely stressed, I do notice that's something I'm doing, but I am not the, that is just not my, what, what, how my OCD manifests itself. And so had I known that there are other versions and maybe I would have known, like, for example, the sock thing, like that personally does not really affect me. Like that's not a problem that I run into often or that is like very distressing for me. And so that is part of the reason why I probably would have thought earlier on like, oh yeah, like I definitely don't have it because a lot of my compulsions are mental to be honest. Um, and so it, it is, I don't know. I see, I think we see a lot of these examples, especially being shown online. It's kind of like, I don't know if you guys have seen the TikToks recently where people have been saying like, if I really told you what my OCD symptoms were like, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't even want to like speak to me like you would be like yeah oh that's that's yeah. not and it's like oh but that is like that that really right. is like it's it's just that the you know maybe the mismatch socks or maybe the cleaning stuff off of the counters you know while that may be for some people i feel like that's like the um the compulsions that are like manageable for the people around us to it's more palatable it's a lot more pa- palatable than like people. It just feels like, tangible. Yeah, yeah it feels exactly. tangible, like physical. Yeah. Yes. No, all of my compulsions are in here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, absolutely, because it's it's way more comfortable to the. I want to say the outside world, as if we are in some bubble, but like it's way more <laughs> comfortable to other people who don't have OCD to see OCD as something like that, like you know, only being about hand washing, mismatched socks, you know, cleaning the counters the second that somebody talks about having like pedophilia OCD, like then it's like, what? No, like, but it's like, no, wait, that, that can be too. Like that, that absolutely can be. Yeah. No, that's so important. I can think even just off the top of my head of like three creators who are making content about their, you know, pedophilia OCD and what that looks like and had really scary repercussions because people were not willing to listen, which we get because it's a taboo topic right but people were just so quick to be like oh this is what you want and not understand the whole aspect of intrusive thoughts right or I had a video where I talked about bestiality OCD which isn't necessarily one I I dealt with sometimes but it wasn't my biggest theme but I talked about having intrusive thoughts about your pets um like sexual thoughts about your pets and that went all sorts of um awry like people were putting that in all sorts of channels that had nothing to do with OCD and really misunderstanding it I was stopped on the street by people being like oh are you the same person who wants to like do things with your dog and things that just were such like mischaracteristics of OCD and I think that that's why I find it so brave when people are willing to share any aspect of your OCD like you said Sam like yeah it's so brave it's so hard And I think that we have a long way to go, but I really do hope that we're getting closer to a world where people can go to their doctor and say, I'm having these thoughts and their doctor can help them understand if it's intrusive thoughts or not before acting on it. Because there are so many people who unfortunately have not had that experience, who have been, you know, put in in systems like because they weren't. I don't know if I want to even say that they're put in like institutions because the therapist really misunderstood that these were intrusive and not actual desires. So they were viewed as a risk or really misunderstood. And I think we have a hard time. We don't like talking about that in the community because it's not fun, obviously. Um, But it is a reality for so many people. And so I think it's, yeah, it's important that we recognize OCD is so much more than just the surface level. It's so much more than anyone TikTok could ever (laughs) encapsulate as much as we try, right? It is so much deeper. Um, And hopefully we're, we're making a world a little bit more understanding and get to a place where kids can, can talk about this and not feel as much shame as we did. It's the time of the season. I love the comment on the side that was like, ha ha ha, OCD is so funny. Yeah. <laughs> because because that, that is how I feel whenever I do see like 
TikToks like that of, uh, of someone who pretty obviously like doesn't have OCD and like what they think yeah. it looks like. Like once again, while that can be distressing to someone, it's like me with diagnosed OCD and I'm like, yeah, so that wouldn't do much for me. Like like I would be able to tolerate that. Not saying that everyone like like to some people it is distressing, but it's like I feel like we're still so behind on what what O C D really is. I've I've seen a lot of videos with that caption recently for some reason. They keep coming up on my for you page and a lot of them are like way worse than that. And I'm like, why purposefully trigger someone? That probably yeah. would really bother somebody. I'm like, that's just not ideal. I don't know. I didn't like that video. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's just frustrating. That type of stuff is frustrating for me to see. It's like yeah. you, would, you wouldn't send that to, I don't know, any of your friends with any other mental, mental health illness. Yes. Yeah. So you wouldn't send that to somebody else. Like, I, I don't even want to give an example, but like you yeah. wouldn't send, yeah. send something like awfully terrible and distressing to your very depressed friend or to your very anxious friend right. or to right. like yeah. you just wouldn't do that um and that's like one of the reasons why I was scared about talking about me having OCD like for example one of my main themes that took like years of my life was I was always paranoid that I was like nine months pregnant and didn't know um and that was so difficult for me so when cryptic pregnancy like TikToks kept popping up on my page or on my Twitter like there was a period of time where I had to have the word like pregnancy cryptic pregnancy like baby like just completely blocked off of all social media and I was so worried like if I talk about this on social media people are going to start sending me baby content people are going to start sending me like send this to your friend if you think that they're nine months pregnant or like whatever it is like I, and it's just it's odd. It's odd when you put it in different situations or you like put it into different scenarios. You wouldn't do that to someone. No. Yeah. Well, and in yeah. ERP, it's all about, you know, facing our fears. We don't want to avoid our fears, right? But exposure has to be consensual for it to work because the whole purpose mm -hmm. is that you are engaging in something that feels distressing to you and you're giving your brain the chance to learn something new. But when you are just so highly distressed, you don't actually learn anything new, right? It's like if someone was scared of snakes, we would not throw them in a pit of snakes because they're not learning anything. They're just learning that snakes are scary. Instead, we'll like show them a picture of a snake and then a little video and like we'll build our way up so they can, you know, have a hierarchy that actually lets them learn something. And so I find that that is so discouraging when people are like, yeah, I'm, oh, they need to get over it. Like, I'm going to send them exactly their triggers to try to make them learn from this. Like, that is not how our brains learn. That's not actually exposure therapy. That's just, like, torture. Um, and then, of course, like, in the case of this video, I didn't even realize what was wrong the first time I watched it. Like, it's not about OCD at all. It's about you maybe not doing your job very well of laying tile, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. Maybe that's the problem, um, but it is really disheartening when, yeah, people view it either as a joke or, um, you know, let that get to such an extreme that they think that they're helping you somehow by exposing you or making you face your OCD when that is your job. Like, that's not theirs. They can choose if they want to be around your OCD or not, right? They get to still have their boundaries, but their boundary cannot be forcing you to face something that you might not be ready to face. 100%. Yeah. I totally agree. Weird video. There's so, <laughs> many of, there's so many of like the satisfying for OCD videos that people send around that it's just really discouraging. I yeah, know. I don't really get those. I have some people will send those to me trying to be like endearing and helpful. <laughs> and I'm like, it's fine, really. I'll take like a cat. Video yeah. You. Like, you know, it's fine. <laughs> I'll watch my like oh, soap yeah. cutting videos or whatever, yeah. whatever, or my slime videos. Like this has nothing to do with my OCD. This is not curing me. I, I do like this video, but um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not cured. This didn't benefit me at all. <laughs> well, and yeah. the irony too is like, even if it was actually about like your fear itself, like we don't just like satisfy our way out yeah, of OCD. No. We yeah. literally face the fears. So if I like was just watching like compulsive reassurance videos, 
it doesn't help me at all anyway. No. Like even if soap cutting somehow could like help me, <laughs> it yeah, wouldn't really yeah. do anything. Right. That's something people just don't understand though, that, you know, all the reassurance in the world, it's actually harmful. So, yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised there's not like videos like that already to try and like reassure. I mean, maybe there are like, like kind of like manifestation reassurance ones, like, like, you know, that false sense of reassurance that actually is harming you. Um, And videos like that, like I had to like completely take personally, like spirituality, like out of my life, like that, like religion, spirituality is not part of my life at all, because I can't like handle that kind of stuff. Well, and for some people, you know, it may feel good to like, get these manifestations or these affirmations where they're like, I am a good person. I did not hit someone with my car yesterday when in reality it's like that's actually the complete opposite of what we're actually doing in therapy Mm -hmm. like I'm sitting in therapy Mm -hmm. like I'm a bad person and I definitely did hit someone with my car yesterday well I think that's that's a huge thing with um being in talk therapy versus doing ERP yeah um I was in talk therapy for a long time and in retrospect I'm like oh that was just someone reassuring me that I didn't do something bad twice a week for years and it's like no wonder that wasn't helping me at all it was just I was just being fed reassurance that's not how you're going to get better with OCD yeah yeah I see a lot of the reassurance videos with like couple videos and like relationship goals and you're Mm -hmm. just watching this like compulsive cycle take place where they're just reassuring each other like that's really hard and yeah I see so many of those like manifestation ones that are just my friend actually Tane her account was like ADHD and OCD um and she did like a a series of um affirmations that were like for OCD that were really exposures so it was like I will open my car door on a helmetless cyclist today or like (laughs) I will give my whole extended family you know the flu over Christmas like yeah really really like in the same like cute like font with all the hearts and like all of that um because that is more what we're doing with ERP we are letting yes. ourselves sit with the the fears and then letting our our brain learn something new rather than just trying to like get rid of that learning process altogether right exactly oh yeah, yeah. I've, I've been worried before I'm like what if somebody finds my my OCD journal where I'm like taking notes like in therapy it might look like I'm like a really awful person writing these like awful yeah. things out on paper um and then I just try to remind myself I'm like this is bettering me this is like genuinely like really really helping me and bettering me by writing these things down and and doing the work that I need to and doing the exposures um but yeah that's very cool that you're yeah. that. I'm gonna I'm gonna check that out yeah no I had that same fear I actually I don't know if you can see it on my camera but I I took one page that felt particularly distressing that I was really scared of people seeing and I framed it and stuck it up on my wall (laughs) like kind of as an exposure of like anyone who comes to my house might read this and think anything of me but it is an important part of my journey was getting to yeah go to the opposite extremes and lean into those fears so I love that um I know we're like over time so let's wrap up here um any any thoughts for, for people who are scrolling through TikTok, who are seeing reels like this, who might be relating or not relating? Like, what do you hope they can take away from this video? I would say just definitely know that OCD does not look one particular way. And if you think that you could be showing signs of OCD or experiencing OCD, um, compulsions don't always have to be physical or tangible. That's something that was huge for me. I didn't personally think I had OCD because I was like, oh, I'm not doing anything uh, physical or I don't have compulsions. I just have the obsessive part, but not the compulsive part. It's it's uh, it goes hand in hand and you can definitely it can be hard to detect compulsions. But I would say definitely um, reach out and get help. And I would I would schedule a call with no CD. That's what I mean. Seriously, that helped that changed my life. So. I agree. I truly wish that I had gotten diagnosed sooner and that I had gotten help for it sooner. And had I, you know, taken the leap to try ERP um, and speak to actual OCD specialists rather than just continuing to go to talk therapy because I was too nervous of I don't know what. Um, I think 
I think of how much better off I would have been um, and how much it has helped me. And like the impact that it has made on my life has been so big that not only do I notice a huge change in like my quality of life, but all of my friends and family notice a huge change. Um, and so I think it's absolutely worth it to reach out to help. It doesn't hurt. Um, and the longer that you wait, it could be time that you're actually helping yourself um, and getting closer to to treatment and feeling a whole lot better. And I wish that I had done that. Yeah, no, I love that. I think I, I often felt like I could just handle it alone and maybe I could, you know, we're all strong people. I'm sure we could, but even still we got help. And I think that OCD really likes to make you feel like you're alone, that no one else will understand and that you need to navigate it by yourself. Like you, it feels sometimes weak to, to actually access the help that you need. Um, and cause there's so much of the hyper responsibility that we take for our lives, right? We want to, to be in control, but I, I think that it's hopefully a, a vote of hope to people that all of us sought help and that help is out there that you deserve help. Even if you could technically handle it alone, like it's so much easier when you actually have someone who specializes in OCD who can help walk you through this process and has the insight that you might not have. Like when you're in the midst of the, the mental illness, I could not make my own exposures because I was too scared to. I needed someone else to step in and tell me what to face and really push me to do that. Um, and so I hope that rather than, you know, diagnosing yourselves off of social media or, or trying to, to lean in, if you have any capacity that you do find a specialized therapist, that's what we do here at No CD. But overall, I hope everyone knows that help is out there and you are not alone. You're in good company like these lovely people I have here. Um, thank you both. Thanks for, for being on. And yeah, we'll close out here. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.